Welcome everyone watching on this day, and I and I just gonna I'm just gonna pray that God just touches your heart from right there, right where you're at. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I I, I want to go into the Word, and I want to ask everybody just to go. Let's go back to the Book of Acts because this is the time we need to start acting. And I'm not talking about for Hollywood, but it's time we start acting. For Jesus Christ. Amen. We start going into the move. We start putting our faith into action. So today I'm going with the book of Acts once again. Chapter 3. And we serve a good God. One God. One God. And, and it's just so beautiful. How, how he could just put everything into his perspective. Everything. See for those who have ears. Listen to what the Lord is telling you. Don't look to see what the Lord is speaking for someone else, yes. but what word he has for you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. The book of Acts, I'm going to read from chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Those here with me can have a seat after I finish, and then those of you that are home can just continue to rejoice in the name of Jesus. But the book of Acts, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10, it is read in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now, a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg for those from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked for money. Then Peter looked at us. Then Peter said, look at us. Look at your neighbor. Say, look at me. Look at me. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give to you. Look at your neighbor. Tell him, I give to you. I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk, taking him by the right hand. He helped them up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the man, at the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Father God, I come before thy presence, giving you all the glory and honor. Thanking you for this moment and opportunity that you've given us to be here today, to worship and praise your name, to exalt you and to glorify you, Heavenly Father, for all that you've done, all that you're doing, but most importantly, what you are about to do now in our lives, my God, for we exhort you, we glorify you. I ask you, Heavenly Father, that all those that joined us today, whether in person or online, that no one departs the same, but full of your joy, your peace, but most importantly, your love. I ask you this in the precious name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Thank amen. you, Jesus. You may have a seat, but do not depart from the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Once again, God bless you all. I don't know about you, but I am truly excited. Amen. Nothing, nothing brings more joy to me than to be able to fellowship together, to worship and praise the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to touch up real, real lightly, real briefly on a little bit of last week before I get into this week. Because, see, I, I, I want to keep the, the, the movement going. I want to keep, you know... the this, this this faith alive. Amen? And last week we spoke, and last week's topic was, what is your next step? Your next step. In the midst of crisis, we, 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 we shut down. But today I tell you, nothing should shut you down. Amen. Nothing. No situation, no circumstance. See, God does not see people that are shut down. God sees people that will raise up, raise their voices out loud, and just continuously shout his name. Amen. 
last week, and, 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 and this week, today, our title for today, the glory belongs to him. Amen. Amen. See, I, 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 I was, there, there was something that has just been pushing and pushing, the healing, the healing, the healing. And, and I said, you know something? The glory belongs to him. Because without him, we are nothing. There is nothing that we can do if it were not for him. Mm -hmm. So all the glory goes to him. Mm -hmm. amen, amen, amen. But last week we started off and, and we spoke about the day of Pentecost. And I want to briefly touch up on some of that before I get into this, into today's topic. Because, see, last week with the day of Pentecost, we, we read, and I'm going to just paraphrase some. I, I'm just going to do briefly because I, I, I want to get somewhere here today. But it was 120 that were gathered in, in one place. And the Bible says that suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven. Did you, did you hear where it came from? It came from heaven. So suddenly a, 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 a blowing wind from heaven came and it filled that house where they were at. And when they filled that house, everybody that was there, they saw what appeared to be tongues of fire. And, and all of a sudden, a tongue of fire just came to rest upon everybody that was in that house. And when they came to rest upon them, they began to speak in, in, in different tongues, different languages, because they were filled with the Holy Ghost. What are you filled with? What has come to rest upon you? See, because when the Holy Spirit comes to rest upon you, you are filled with those tongues of fire. You should be shouting and praising the Lord God Almighty. You shouldn't be concerned with what's going on in the world, but with what's going on in your life. They were there, and these tongues of fire came upon them. Now they're there, they filled with the Holy Ghost, and they're speaking in different tongues and languages. And then all of a sudden, you get a big group that comes over. Why? Because they heard these people speaking in all these different languages. And it was the languages that they spoke. And they said, these, these is foreigners up over here. And they speak in our language. How can this be? See, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to speak life. Because you're going to speak a different language. You're not going to speak the world language. But you're going to speak the Holy Ghost language. Amen. And when you speak that Holy Ghost language, you are going to bring life. Into yes. other people. Amen. Because when these people came, even though some of them were still mocking them, saying, Oh, that group got to be drunk. Peter stood up with the 11. The Bible registers that they stood up and Peter raised his voice. Yes. What are you raising your voice to? Uh -huh. What are you shouting out to? Because it says Peter raised his voice and he let them know. He addressed the crowd and let them know. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. These people ain't drunk. You just don't understand. See, he explained to them what was going on. He explained to them and let them know. This is prophecy that's being fulfilled here. That's what this is. This is prophecy that's being fulfilled here. And I tell you today, what you see going on in the world is prophecy being fulfilled. Don't let that scare you. I come to encourage you today. Amen. To encourage you. See, we're living in a crisis. But the world is always full of crisis. Mm -hmm. Is this today? What's tomorrow? Mm -hmm. What's tomorrow? See, we have to be ready for these challenges. Amen. And when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you will always be ready. Amen. See, because you will know how to fight. Yeah. I told you before, this is your fighting tool. Amen. This is your sword. Yeah. You get this book. You read it. Upside down, in and out. You read it back and forth. Let it fill your spirit. Because when that, when this book fills your spirit, see, your spirit begins to stir. Yes. And you become like the prophet Jeremiah. Even though you don't want to speak. Because you begin to feel that people are not going to listen. I tell you now, when that fire starts to stir you up, you have no other choice but to open your mouth. You have no other choice but to raise your voice. You have no choice but to let people know and show the people the God in you. 
Not the world in you, but the God in you. Because too many people are walking the worldly way, but say that they're Christians. And I'm here today to tell you, don't fool yourself because you ain't fooling God. Amen. Hallelujah. But, but now, prophecy was being fulfilled at that time, and, and, and Peter was just there, and he let them know. And, you, and, and I want you to know, he said, it says that he raised his voice. See, he let them know. And right after, 3,000, 3,000 became saved. See, the words that come out your mouth can save an individual or kill an individual. Amen. You pick and choose which one you want to do. Amen. See, I chose to save people. Amen. I chose to save people. And that's why I'm grateful. Amen. For what Christ has done in my life. That's right. Amen. I am so grateful for where he has taken me from and where he has brought me to. Amen. Now we read a little bit after. It, it, it says that, that the Bible says that they devoted themselves mm -hmm. to the apostles' teachings and the fellowship. See, when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your life, see, you can't do this alone. You can't. See, that's why it says that they devoted themselves. So these 3,000 devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and the fellowship. They sat and they broke bread together and they prayed together. You can't break bread with everybody. Amen. You can't pray, break bread with everybody. Come on. And you can't pray with everybody. Amen. You can pray for everybody, but you can't pray with everybody. That's right. Because some people is going to try to distract you Amen. in the midst of your prayer. Yes. You don't need no distraction when you pray. Amen. The world brings distraction. Yes. But these, these 3,000, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings Amen. and the fellowship. They sat, they broke bread and prayed together. And, and because they did that, because they did that, the Bible says that many were filled with awe on the wonder and signs that were being performed at that time. Amen. What are people in awe with you? Wow. What are people are people in awe when they see you? Do they see those signs and wonders? Do they see the Christ in you? Amen. Do they see it? See, when you have Christ in you, you can't act one way here and another way there and another way there. Your behavior has to be the same. Amen. Your speech has to be the same. Amen. You don't have to adapt to the places you enter. Amen. The places you enter have to adapt to you. Hallelujah. See, you have to be the difference. You have to be the one to change that atmosphere. See, when those 120 gathered and those tongues of fire, when they were filled with the Holy Ghost, see, they didn't adapt to the way the world thought. Yeah. The world began to adapt to the way they spoke. Amen. See, their actions spoke louder than their words. Amen. What's speaking louder for you? Amen. Your words or your actions? Because we can all talk a good one. Wow. The world will teach you how to talk a good yes, one. Yes, it will. I know. I've been there. Mm. See, but when you can take that ne the negative ways of the world and you can turn it into something positive for Christ, you'll be amazed. Amen. The lives that you can save. Yes. Because that's what becomes important. Yes. See, not only that, but the Bible registers. In, 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 that's in chapter 2, it says that at the, the last uh, uh, verse, 47... Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Did you get that? I'm going to say that one more time. And the Lord added to those numbers. Amen. Not Peter, not John, not Matthew, not another day 11, not the 120 people that were filled with the Holy Ghost. But the Lord Hallelujah. added to the numbers. The Lord. That's right. The Lord added to that. Y'all can say that one more time. The Lord added to that number. It wasn't their own doing, but the Holy Ghost, that, that, that Holy Ghost that just fell upon them, had them speaking. And because of that, their numbers added up daily. What's adding up in your life? I'm not going to ask you what's in your wallet, but what's in your heart? 
See, what's in your wallet cannot compare to what's in your heart. Amen. See, you can't put Christ in your wallet because you can't buy nothing with Christ. Yes, sir. See, Christ is free and it's free to everybody. We don't come to sell Christ. We come to encourage you to accept Christ. See, put Christ in your heart and you will feel the difference. You will see the difference. See, I'm not telling you your life is going to be a, 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 a bundle of roses. You know, it's not going to smell good all the time. That's right. But at the end of the day, when you do what Christ has called you to do, you're going to feel good at the end of the day. And that's what matters. You're going to feel good. See, you're not going to look good to everybody. You're not going to sound good to everybody. That's because right. when Peter addressed that that's crowd, right. it was way more than 3,000. So not everybody accepted it. Mm -hmm. But those that accepted it devoted themselves to it. That's right. Amen. What are you devoting yourself to? Amen. See, what are you devoting yourself Amen. to? Amen. See, there's a lot of people that yourself? hear about Jesus, but never get to knowing who Jesus really Amen. is. See, you can hear about Jesus. We can hear about the signs and wonders, the healing, the miracles. Everybody hears about that. But nobody truly gets to knowing who he is. Mm -hmm. See, and for you to know who Jesus is, you have to accept him into your life. Because when you accept him into his into your life, then that's when you get to knowing who Jesus truly is. Amen. So, see, you no longer have to say, oh, I've heard of Jesus. But when you speak, you can say, I know who Jesus that's is. Right. See, Jesus changes your life. That's right. Jesus changes your life. Amen. And I'm going to get to that. Because, see, I'm going to get to the scriptures I read. But I, I, and I'm not looking to offend nobody. But there's a lot of leaders out there. Right? And there are leaders who are speaking of Jesus, but not really living for Jesus. Yeah. There are leaders who are teaching of Jesus, but not leading the people to Jesus. Yeah. We better watch out. I don't exclude myself. I'm very careful. There's no exception to this. Mm. See, we all short fall, short, fall short of his glory mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. But you got to know you're falling. Mm. Because if you fall short of his glory, you're you in trouble. You got to know how to rise. Mm -hmm. See, you don't have to stay down on the ground. Amen. You can rise back up, shake it off, dust mm -hmm. it off, and you keep going. Uh -huh. That's a good fight. Mm -hmm. See, that's a good fight. You don't worry about whether you won or you lost. All you have to worry about, you fought. You fought. We're going to lose some battles sometime. But the war is ours. That's right. That's See, right. you might lose a battle. Mm -hmm. But we're going to win the war. Yeah. That's what matters. See, and we're going to win the war. Yes, we are. We're going to win the war. Mm -hmm. See, we have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. Because even at a time like now, there's many people. Hearing about Jesus. Mm. Hearing about how good God is. Yeah. There are many people who never knew Jesus. Never wanted Jesus in their life. Who have taken Jesus into their life now. Amen. Where do you put them when this is over? Mm. Where do you put them? Because a lot of people say I can't wait for this to be over. I want to go back to my norm. What is your norm? Mm. God didn't call us to be normal. He didn't call us to be normal. See, you have to be different. Mm -hmm. You have to be different. See, you have to know how to speak different so that the whole world can know what Christ did in you. Amen. You can't just speak to people depending where you're at. Wow. Well, I'm over here. They don't really like to talk about Jesus or God, so I can't bring them up today. That's a lie from the devil. That's fine. That's a lie from the devil. Don't be like those that's taking them out to schools, taking them out the course, taking them out their lives and everything. Like, no, nah, no, nah. you keep Jesus in your life. And when you have that opportunity, you speak life into another person. Amen. You speak life. Don't, don't put the Holy Ghost to sleep. Amen. He don't have a bad time. Mm. Don't put him to rest. Holy Ghost isn't one of those that you could click on and off, on and off, on and off. You got to be careful. 
Because one day you might click him off and he might never come back on for you. Yep. You don't want that. You don't want that. But I want to get into the scriptures we read here. See, these scriptures, and, and like I said, the glory belongs to him. All the time. Because Peter and John, they were going about their day-to-day -day business. And it says one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful. Called Beautiful. Amen. Where he was put every day to bed from those going into the temple courts. Where are you being placed? Where is the enemy placing you? Mm -hmm. He was a, a lame man. From birth, he was born like this. With a deficiency. Mm -hmm. And people were just taking advantage of him. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to help him, they were using him. Mm -hmm. Because they were, if the Bible just said that they were taking him and sitting him in front of that gate. The beautiful gate. So that he can beg for money. As the people walked into the court. Into the temple court. Do you really believe. That he was keeping that money. I don't think so. You know, they were probably giving him a little food. Giving him a little change of clothes. And he couldn't fight back. He couldn't fight back. He couldn't get up and say, oh, nah, I worked hard for this. He couldn't do that. Because the people were controlling him. Who's controlling you? Yeah. What's controlling you? Come on. Where has the enemy placed you Hallelujah. so that he can use you? Wow. Today I tell you, Amen. get up. We're going to get you there. But get up. Stop sitting around being used by the enemy. Stop. See? But he was sitting there and he was begging. And this was an everyday thing. Every day. But God is so good. Yes, yeah. See, the enemy can use you but only so much. Mm -hmm. Because right. now, now we get into something here. See, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. That's all he knew how to do. That's all he was taught how to do. Don't worry, we got you covered. See, that's what the enemy will do. He'll tell you, don't worry, I got you covered. All you got to do is ask and you're going to receive. Yeah, what are you going to receive? Wow. Because he was asking. He was gay. <clears throat> but it wasn't even for him. It was for those that was putting them there. Mm. But now it says, Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. See, you got to know when to tell somebody, look at me. See, people will speak to you, but they won't look directly at you. See, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, people would avoid looking at you. They want to look the other way. They want to look with their head down. Hey, can you help me out today? But see, when you, when you say, look at me, when they make that eye contact with you, the Holy Ghost in you should transfer to them. See, it should be an immediate and instant. See, something should shift when it's inside the person that you say, look at me. But Peter and John, Peter looked at him and said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. He wasn't wrong. He was right. Because the Bible says he was expecting to get something from them. He was hoping to get something from them. But he didn't get what he thought he was going to get. See, when you speak to people, they're going to expect to get something from you. But what are they expecting to receive from you? Are you giving them what they expect? Or are you giving them what God has deposited in you? Because see, from there, it, it, from there Peter says, Silver or gold, I do not have. But what I do have, I give you. That's right. 
give to you in the name of Jesus. People are going to come looking for money. People are going to come looking for things. And you may not have the money to give to them. Uh -huh. But you surely got something you can give them. Santo. See, they say, we don't have what you're looking for. But I do have something that I can give to you. Uh -huh. Stay with me. Mm -hmm. See, because right after that, it says, in the name of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. of Nazareth. Mm -hmm. They didn't say from them. Right. He said, I do have what I can give you. What I have, I can give you. They didn't have money. But they had the Holy Ghost in them. Amen. See? And, 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 and they said, keep in mind, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Wasn't on them. But when they said that, they told the man, walk. Man didn't expect that one. That man, was, he was lame from birth. And all he knew how to do was sit there. But yet, they come and they tell him, we don't have money. Man probably looked in his mind and said, man, you ain't got no money. You ain't got no bag with you. you what are you going to give me? You got a sandwich in your pocket? Mm -hmm. They said, I don't have what you're asking for. <clears throat> but I surely have something better than money. Hallelujah. See, and they told him, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And the Bible registers, they took him by the hand. By his right hand. They took him by his right hand. Helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. Santo! See, there are many people that are heartbroken. Mm -hmm. There are many people that, that their mind is just elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And today I tell you. When you have the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, when you accept him as your Lord and Savior, yes, and you are filled with the Holy Ghost, yes, you may not God. be able to give the people what they're asking for at that moment, but you will give them something greater than what they're asking for. Yes, and they will be able to receive yes. what they are seeking. Yes. See, because when they told them, in the name of Jesus Christ, walk, it says that his feet, his ankles became strong and he was able to get up. They didn't tell him to get up by himself. They helped him up. Amen. You can't give a person a word and walk away. That's right. You got to give them the word and you got to help them. Amen. You got to take them by that right hand and you got to walk them down the street. Amen. That's what you have to do. Hallelujah. See, you can speak a good one. Yeah. But you have to live that good one. Yes. So after you speak that good one, lead them into the good Come one. Come on, hallelujah. Because that's the Christ in you. Yes, hallelujah. That's the Christ in us. Yes, God. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went in with them into the temple courts. When they gave him that word and he began to, to, to walk, he didn't run to go show the, the town he can walk. The Bible says he walked into the temple courts with them. He went in with them. He knew what the people were going in there for. Didn't say he, he was dumb. Just say he was lame. <laughs> That's it. See? He might not have been able to walk. But he knew. He had good, great idea of what he was doing, but that's all he was taught. But see, when you speak to individuals who are taught one way, the Christ in you has to shift something in them. They have to feel it, because this man felt it. He felt it, all the way down to the bottom of his feet, all the way down. It didn't just touch his heart. Amen. But it hit a nerve. Amen. And when it hit that nerve, Hallelujah. it began to shift things yes. in him. It says that his feet and ankles yes. became strong. Yes. Don't let the devil take your feet. Woo. Don't let him take the gospel from you. That's right. Come on. Don't let him. Yeah. See, because when he takes the gospel from you, you have nothing. That's right. 
You be like that man sitting at the gates begging. Santo. See, and the thing is that you don't have to beg. Because you have it all. That's right. See, you have more than what you think. Amen. All you have to do is put it into action. Amen. You have to activate that faith and move on it. Amen. Because faith is now. Now. Faith is now. Today. Now. Not tomorrow. Now. Today. Now. now. They didn't tell a man walk. He didn't wait till tomorrow to walk. It says that they grabbed him. They helped him up. And as they helped him up, his ankles, his feet became so strong that he began to walk on his own. He didn't start crawling to walk. He has been crawling all his life. Now he began to walk. It's never too late to start walking. See, because you, you probably think because you, you, you're moving your feet that you're walking. But you ain't getting nowhere. Amen. You are not getting nowhere. You could be on the treadmill. And you could be moving your feet. And you're not going nowhere. You're in the same spot. Yeah. But you think you've gotten somewhere. Santo. You're not getting nowhere. But after they helped him up, he went into the temple courts. Walking, jumping, and praising God. He didn't praise God. Peter and John he praised God see when you speak life into someone don't expect them to give you the praise Amen. the glory belongs to him yes. the glory belongs yes. to God yes. no one else but God when God uses you as an instrument it's not for you to sit there pump your chest all up and tell people look what I did no you can't do that because you didn't do it it was the Christ in you that did it. Peter and John made it very known and clear to the man. When they told him, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they were giving the credit to Jesus Christ, Amen. not to themselves. Amen. See, then it says, when all the people saw him walking and praising, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. See, I would dare say, I'm sure there were people inside that temple, they were probably praying for that man. They were probably praying for God to bring healing to that man. They were probably praying for God to do something for that man. But you know what they failed to do? They failed to speak directly to the man. You can pray for somebody all you want. Amen. But at some point, you got to speak to that person. You got to let that person know, I've been praying for yes. you. And the Holy Ghost told me, today is your day. Yes. Today is your day. Yes. Get up. Rise up to your feet. Walk, Amen. jump, and praise God. Hallelujah. We pray. Yes, Lord. And when something happens and, and, and God does a miracle in someone's life, we, we run to them and tell them, oh, I've been praying for you. Ah. Well, why don't you tell them you've been praying for them before the miracle comes so that they can know what you've been doing. See, you can pray in secret. But at some point, you got to open your mouth and let the people know, hey, you're in my prayers. Hey, I've been praying for you today. Amen. See, people will be going through certain situations and circumstances. They will feel all alone. But if you just give them a call, when God puts someone in your heart, just give them a call. Let them know, hey, I'm praying for you. Amen. That will motivate them. That will give them life. They will raise right back up because they will know that someone cares. Yes, amen. This wasn't the first time that Peter and John were walking into the temple court. This was a norm for them. But when that man asked them for money, they said, I don't have what you're asking for. But what I do have, I can give to you. I know it made that man think, what do y'all have that y'all can give me? What do you have that can truly help me? Well, today I'm here to tell you that a simple I love you will help somebody. Amen. A simple love Jesus loves you Amen. will raise someone from the dead. Amen. Because there are many walking dead. Mm -hmm. Many people walking dead. Yes. But when you say, 
Jesus loves you. That starts to stir something up. There are many people that are heartbroken. And all they need to know is that someone loves them. Someone cares for them. And that will make a difference. That will shift things around. Yes. Hallelujah. See, and when you do something. And you see the signs and wonders being performed. Don't boast about what you're doing. Amen. Because I'm here today to tell you that you are doing nothing. Amen. That is God doing it through you. Amen. So you Amen. give God the glory. Yes. When someone calls you and tells you, listen, thank you for your prayers. You tell them, thank you for allowing me That's to right. pray for That's you. Right. Thank you for allowing me to pray for you. Yes. Because I give the glory to God. Because I thank God for using me as an instrument. Amen. That's right. When you live in the street, you live under revenge. Mm -hmm. Under revenge. Because you're always looking to get somebody back. Amen. And the funny thing is that they don't even have to do nothing to you. They do somebody, something to somebody that you know. And you already jumped in. You know what? Nah, I got your back. I got your back. I got you covered. Nah, they did it to you. They did it to me. That's, what the, that's the world's way. Mm -hmm. But when you're in Christ, those ways no longer exist. Mm -hmm. Or oh, I'm going to put it like this. Those ways should no longer exist. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because they, they, they still there. They yeah. still there. And the enemy will try to find a way yeah. to get you to release That's it. Right. But when you have an encounter with God, yeah. the enemy cannot release nothing inside of you yeah. because only God releases from you. Amen. And God releases love. Yes. Compassion. Yes. That's what he releases. Amen. That's what he releases. Yes. And, and, and I don't care who you are or, or, or how you see things because, see, you know, the, the, the enemy is always going to tempt you. He's always going to throw something at you to see which way you take it. See, but you have to know how to play dodgeball. See, you know, when, when you're standing there, you're in the middle, and you're just waiting, waiting. Go ahead, throw the ball, throw the ball. And, and, and you got to move. You can't let the ball hit you, right? Or you lose. That's the same way with the enemy. See, because if you stand there and you don't move, you just become his target. And he'll just keep throwing and once he hits you with one thing, he's going to hit you with something else and something else and something else. And all you're going to do is get yourself all lost. You're going to go back to who you were. Sounds but God didn't call us to be who we were. He called us to be who he wants us to be. He is the great I am. And I'm almost finished. But see, I got to take you into a little bit further. Because it says, we left off here where it says that, you know, when, when, when the people saw this man walking, mm -hmm. they were in awe. Yeah. See, they, they were so used to seeing him sitting at the, at the front door. Mm -hmm. They were used to giving him, a, 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 I, I would say, because I'm sure people gave him. I had pity. Because a lot of times we feel sorry and we have pity in our, in, in our heart. And, and, and we just, out of sorrow, we give to people. But today, take that sorrow. And turned it into something greater. Amen. It's okay to feel sorry for someone. It's just not okay to go into the pity with them. Amen. See, people will go into those stages. But when you see someone like that, join them. Tell them, you know what? I'm going to pray with you. Yes. I'm going to pray. We're going to pray our way out of this. That's Amen. right. It might be your way, but I'm going to include myself in there with you. Amen. Because I got your back. Amen. As followers and believers of Christ, we're supposed to have one another's back. See, I know I can call on people and tell them I need help in prayer. And they will join me in prayer. Because there is always that remnant group that will faithfully pray with you. Yes. And we will see it through. Yes. I don't have to see it through. We will see it through. Amen. And we will give the glory to him. Amen. Amen? Amen. It says, from verse 11, from chapter 3 now, it says, While the man held on to Peter and John, 
all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colony. Did, did you get that? While the man was still holding on to Peter and John, he didn't let them go. What they gave him was something way more than what anybody else had given them. See, the amount of money that people dropped into his basket no longer meant nothing to him. Because what he received, it doesn't say he picked up his basket. It says he got up, he started to walk, he started to jump, he started to praise God. He probably left the basket there. Hallelujah. Many of us would have grabbed that basket. But sometimes you don't know what's in the basket. Sometimes people, they, you, you think they dropped a coin in there, but they dropped a curse in there. Huh. What's in your basket? There's people that tell you, I'm going to pray for you. But they're not praying for you. They're praying against you. Amen. You got to stay filled with the Holy Ghost. You got to keep that Holy Spirit active and alive in you. So that you can know. You'll be able to discern when people are praying for you and against you. Amen. And you don't got to tell somebody you lying. Unless the Spirit tells you to. You just look at them and tell them, yeah, okay, I'm going to pray for you more. That's all you got to do. Because the more you pray for them the more they have to change. Amen. But it's going to come a time where you're going to have to confront some people and tell them, listen, I know you're not praying for me, mm -hmm. but that's okay because I've still been praying for you. Amen. This isn't about revenge. This isn't about what you can get. But this man, he appreciated what he just got. And he wanted to hold on to it. So that's why he grabbed on to Peter and John. This was a life changing effect that he just received. Something to be thankful for. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own prayer power or godliness, we have made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. The God of our fathers has glorified his servant, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> they didn't take credit. There was no need for them to take credit. They didn't need a platform. Amen. They just needed Christ. Too many times people are taking a platform. For attention. You don't need a platform for attention. When you do the will of God, people will see it in you, and that will be your platform. Amen. You could be on the line in the supermarket, that can be your platform. Amen. You could be at the line in your job, and they will see the signs and wonders. That can be your platform. You don't need to force God on no one. But when that opportunity comes, learn to grab onto it. See, that opportunity came to Peter and John while they were walking into the temple court. And they grabbed onto it. I don't have money to give to you. But what I have, I can give you. When you, when, when you speak to someone, if you see that they're going through something, Offer them a prayer at that moment. That is the greatest thing that you can do for that person at that time. That prayer will change their life. Amen. And when you finish, just tell them, Jesus loves you. Stir it up in them. They will take that with them. And when they see themselves in the mirror and they start to see the difference, they will remember you. But what they will remember more is the words that you gave him. Amen. Jesus loves you. Amen. The glory belongs to him. To him. To him. Peter and John. They made it known. It's not us. Why are y'all so surprised? You know. Why are you staring at us like if we did this? We didn't do this. You heard of Jesus. 
Y'all heard of Jesus? Why you? I'm not doing nothing. I'm only doing what my father sent me to do. It's the same thing Jesus did. Jesus did nothing more but the will of his father. Amen. His father sent him here for a purpose, <coughs> a great purpose, a grand purpose. And he fulfilled that purpose. Amen. You are been you have been placed here with a purpose. Amen. Fulfill it. Amen. And it goes on. Because Peter told him, see, there's nothing we do on our own. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. He let the people know. What we're doing isn't us. It's coming from the one that you're handed over. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't hang Jesus over to be crucified. He's already been crucified. Amen. We can't re-crucify him. We can't expect him to resurrect all over again. He already resurrected. Amen. He's already alive. Amen. See, we keep looking at the past. Forget about the past. Look at the present. Amen. What is your present condition now? What is it that you need now? Now. Now. Today. What is it that you need? Amen. Chapter 3, verse 16. And I promise I'm almost finished, but I can't leave you with this. Because it says, by faith in the name of Jesus... This man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Amen. It was in the name of Jesus. It was Jesus who healed him. Peter and John were simply instruments. As believers, as servants of the Most High, we are instruments for his glory. Amen. Amen. For his glory. Yes. You have the power within you Amen. to speak life. Amen. You have the power in you to bring healing. You have the power in you to bring restoration. You have it. Amen. You just have to activate it. I have to activate it. It's there. See deep down in your heart. It is there. And if it wasn't there before, then today if you're watching, it's there. Amen. The seed is there. Amen. It is there. See, when you have an encounter with Christ, your life should never be the same. Amen. It should never be the same. Too many people keep hearing about Jesus. But it is time to show them who Jesus really is. Amen. It is time for people to know who Jesus is Amen. in your life. Lord. Not in someone else's life. Amen. In, your life. in your life. Who is he in your life? And I'm going to finish with my friend Paul. From the book of Acts. Chapter 19. Verses 11 and 12. Because see, when you have an encounter with Christ, when you allow yourself to be filled with the Holy Ghost, your life is going to be different. Your life is going to be different. Because even with Peter, there's a song. It's in the Bible because it says, No era la sombra, ni tampoco Pedro. Era porque Pedro tenía espíritu de Nazareno. See, it wasn't Peter or his shadow. It was because of Jesus of Nazareth that was inside of Peter. Amen. That when he walked down the street, people were healed. If they fell under Peter's shadow, they were healed. See, that is the power of Christ. That is the power that is in you. You just have to believe it. Hallelujah. Yeah, you have to walk in it. You have to train. Oh, yes. You have to train yourself. Yes. 
You have to believe in yourself. You have to activate the faith in you. When you walk, you have to walk the walk. We can't only talk the talk, but you have to walk that walk. If you talk of Christ, you have to walk for Christ. Paul, he has such an encounter. When I read his story, that changed my life. Amen. That story showed me that the things that I did during my childhood Amen. could have been forgiven, were forgiven. Amen. It made me a different person. Amen. Because I said, if God was able to do it for a man like that, that persecuted the Christians, he could do it for me. Amen. He did it. I am a living testimony of what Christ can do in your life. And I'm going to tell you that when Paul accepted Christ, this is what it says happened. Chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. Extraordinary miracles. That's what God can do through you. It is not impossible. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how you've lived. I'm here today to tell you it is possible. Trust in God. Believe in God. He will do it. Raise it to your feet. You want to be a superhero? You want to be a superhero? Put Christ into your life. Put Christ into your life. Take this word that I'm telling you. And believe in it. Take this word that I'm telling you. And accept it. I'm going to do a special prayer today. But before I do that special prayer. Anybody that's been watching. Or is watching. And you never truly accepted Christ into your life. I'm going to invite you. To accept him into your life. He will change your life. He will strengthen your feet. You will be able to walk like never before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you just to say this prayer with me. In the name of Jesus. And it says, Father, I come to you. Father, I come to you. Through your son Jesus. Through your son Jesus. Just as I am. Just as I am. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. In your name. In your name. I forgive all others. I forgive all for what they have done. For what they have against done. Against me. Against me. I renounce Satan. I renounce Satan. All evil spirits. All evil and spirits. And their works. And their works. I give my entire self. I give my entire to you, self Lord Jesus, to you, Lord Jesus, now and forever. Now and forever. I invite you into my life, Jesus. I invite you into my I life, I accept Jesus. you as my Lord, God, and Savior. I accept you as my Lord, God, Heal, me. Heal me. Change me. Change me. Strengthen me in body, Strengthen soul, me. and spirit. In body, soul, Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Cover me with your precious blood. Cover me and fill blood. me with your Holy Spirit. I ask you to go before me today and prepare the way in Jesus' name. I thank you, Jesus. I shall follow you every day of my life. Now, Jesus, you live in me and I live in you in Jesus' name. If you are watching and you said that prayer, I'm going to ask you just to inbox me. I want to pray for you. I want to give you the word of God. I want to encourage you to continue to move forward. Before we close out publicly, I want to do a prayer 
for someone that's been on my heart. And I asked them for permission to say their name. I wasn't going to say it, but they told me to say it. And I'm going to say it because we've been praying for this young man. His name is Rodolfo Rodriguez, known as Rudy. And I know you're watching, Rudy. Hallelujah! And I want you to know that today's your day. Today's your day. See, I believe in the God of healing. I believe that Jesus still heals. And I'm going to pray for a miracle in your life right now. Cancer is going to be removed in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to ask everybody watching with me just to pray in the name of Jesus. But Father God, I come before your presence asking you at this hour to let the Holy Spirit fall upon Rudy right there where he's at watching. Heavenly Father, let him be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let your word dwell within him, Heavenly Father. I ask for divine healing. I ask for a miracle. Let him be a testimony, Heavenly Father. Let him feel the fire within you. Just as the day of Pentecost, as they waited, and they felt that, that that blue violent wind that just entered into the house, and it fell and rested upon them. I ask for the spirit of healing to fall upon them. We ask for that miracle, Heavenly Father. We ask for that miracle, Heavenly Father. We ask for that miracle of healing in the name of Jesus. Shake them up, Heavenly Father. Remove it in the name of Jesus. I believe in you, my God. I believe in you, my God. I believe in you, my God. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Your word does not return void, my God. Yes, God. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Yes, we thank you. Now, Father God, I come before your presence. Yes. Pray for all those that have said this prayer. I pray for all those who have lost someone recently in the midst of this crisis. I ask that you bring strength and comfort into their homes, my God. That you fill their hearts with joy. I know it's not easy, Heavenly Father. But you are good and you are great. Open the windows of your heavens and pour your presence amongst them, my God, wherever they find themselves. Grant them strength and, co and comfort, my God. Yes, God. Strength and comfort. Bring healing into their hearts. I ask you, Heavenly Father, to bring restoration into the marriages, Heavenly Father. Restore the brokenhearted. Bring healing into them. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let them know, Heavenly Father, that Jesus loves them. Love conquers all things. Yes, Lord. For I exhort you and I glorify you. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. Now, Heavenly Father, as we prepare to depart from this place, I ask your prayer that your presence continue to dwell within us. That your light shine upon us and your angels surround us. Yes, God. Shield us and protect us, Heavenly Father. Yes, God. Lead us and guide us. Let those that have simply heard of you yes, know of you. Yes, Let them feel you in their hearts, my God. Hallelujah. May they have a life changing effect yes. like the lame man. Yes. There are many that have been born into this world and simply know nothing but the world. But today I ask you to change it, Heavenly Father. That you change it. That they can know that there is something greater yes. than the world. And that is your kingdom. Yes, Lord. Through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray 
in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Have a wonderful day and be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I want to thank everybody.